Hey, I'm Carlos Lago, and up next is a free episode from my show, which airs every weekday exclusively on Motor Trend On Demand. The show is called Daily Fix, and it's about going deeper into the personalities and cars behind this brand and this website and the magazines and all that stuff. The conversations are more casual. We're a little bit more, uh, less, we're a little bit less rigid with everything that we do because I want to see what happens and show you what happens when the cameras get turned off on the big high dollar production value shows that we do here. If you like what you see, go subscribe to, at MotorTrendOnDemand.com for a free 30-day trial. If not, that's cool. I won't be offended at all. I'll, I'll be offended. Really be offended. Hi, Randy. Hey, Carlos. How are you doing? I'm great, man. I'm having a ball. I'm having a good time, too. And I would like to believe that if there were a superhero named Captain Rad, yeah. And he were in charge of Ford product. Yeah. He might have come up with this car. <laughs> I like it too. I've driven the Shelby GT350R before. In fact, quite a bit. So the GT350R means, of course, is not permitted for children under the age of 17 without adult supervision. <laughs> uh, what it really means... Good idea. Big uh, 5.2 liter flat plane crank V8. A lot of power. 525 horsepower. A lot of revs. 8,200 RPM redline. Yeah, baby. Man. From a Ford. So what we're going to do, we can, we'll go left out of here. What yeah. we're going to do is we're going to put the exhaust in loud mode. Anything coming? Uh, let's see. No, you're good. It's got a little blind spot window. That's nice. That is helpful. I'm going to take the, uh, the right route here. Oh, you put it in loud, did you? Why would you not have it in loud? Uh, That's the real question. Because you're in a neighborhood. Hooked up, Carlos. <laughs> but this, really, you know what else? So I felt like I was revving it out. Right. That was about five grand. I had 3,200 RPM left. It's taking this car to redline is such an experience. It's revving and it's revving and it's. And route a road. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's what happens. We had a long way to go. That was third gear. Every single time I take this car to redline, I look down at the tack and I go, are you serious? Are you serious? I still have another 2,000 RPM to go? Me too. It's amazing. It's a broad power curve. It just keeps going. It builds and builds and it builds keeps and keeps building. Builds. And when, like, I keep surprising you short shift this car all the time because you don't believe if you were to, if you were to shift based on sound and feel, yeah. it would never feel like you're going to kiss the red line. Yeah, that's 5,000 RPM. It yes. sounds way more. And then it just keeps going. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Close ratio gears. It just rocked on keeps that 2-3 shift. Right in the power band. Yeah. It's a, I like that. It's a very special motor. And it's a wholly unique motor. So what makes it unique is it's, of course, a cross-plane crank V8. But it's not like any cross-plane crank V8 out there that I can think of. It doesn't have the, the two intake manifolds that you get on the Ferrari. Yes. Right? And, yeah. the exhaust, and the firing order has to be different because of other complications. And, you know, they couldn't get the exhaust to fit correctly. Hmm. So it has a different firing order. And that gives it a character and sound like no other V8 engine out there. And a revving uh, rev power band and a rev range, that's just bizarre. Yeah, it's a very unique sound. It's a little more, it's like a cross between a, a revving European V8 yes. and a rumbling American one. Absolutely. It's a, it's a cross. And I, and I like that it's unique. I don't like that it doesn't necessarily follow sound engineering principles, right? There's actually some compromise. It's a big stroke, high revving motor that happens to have a flat plane crank V8. So yeah, you'd have to wonder about long-term durability and it's shaking itself apart if you if you track it a lot I'd, ha I'd, yeah. I'd hope of course you'd imagine that it's gone through all kinds of durability testing and practices at Ford and whatnot but I would imagine there's yeah. still some in the back of your head going like uh, you know <laughs> ah, it is really composed I gotta say so it, you know, the centerpiece of this car is this engine. It dominates the entire conversation of the driving, right? Yeah, you it know, does. It's so obnoxiously loud, but wonderful. 
and so unique. I mean, it is a great marketing point. Absolutely. To be so different and kind of exotic. It's the bragging point of this car, right? But on top of that, you also have carbon fiber wheels. I love that. <laughs> and you have really sticky tires. You have really well-developed suspension across the entire board. This has the, the Magna Ride suspension that GM, you know, Delphian created. GM used first, Ferrari's used. And I now see, because it is actually riding quite well. Yes. Compared to some of the other sporty cars we've been in today. And what that, that system gives you is a breadth of capability. You know, it's this huge window of operation where a car that has an R badge on it, you could conceivably daily drive this car without any issue. Yeah, you this might, is very much a track car, isn't it? Yeah, and you might go to jail because it makes you drive like an idiot. <laughs> but it, it's I'd comfortable worry about that. Yeah, right? Like, I, I say this a lot, but the measurement of a, how good a car is is how much of a jerk it makes you drive like. And this is like off the chart in that scale. It is. You know, it this is a car that turns me into a hooligan. You want to turn the stability control off and pop the clutch through every single intersection. Yeah. Because man, it's rewarding. Yeah. But that's the sign of an extremely well-developed car, right? Yeah, it is. Good handling. You remember the Boss 302, of course. Of course. Yeah. Which one? Well, there was the Boss 302, the Laguna Seca. Back when I was a kid. There was one oh. back when you were a kid two years ago. Two years ago when I was a kid, right? <laughs> Just hit puberty last month. I remember that one. <laughs> Wait, the boss or the puberty? <laughs> Pretty good hole there at the apex. I'd say so. Didn't upset the car though. Man, it just, it takes the power and just grips. It's great. There's a lot of bite on this thing, and it's funny to think that you're short shifting it. You know, like it's yeah, I really feel like I'm revving it out. I'm not, am no, I? It's amazing. I mean, this it, the rev, the power band is like an old, or it's like a rotary. Oh yeah, you know, it just, just keeps goes going and going and going. And going. going. I mean, the only difference is this one's actually going fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? They seemed fast at the time. Absolutely. But 1979 was a very different world. Absolutely. Oh, look at this. Hooligan! Here, let me check that hood real quick. Yeah, I just yeah, had, no I had a little moment there. I thought I saw it try to pop on it. Oh no, we're good. We're good. It's it's just that the the prow of the the Mustang body is rather high. Yeah. Got a high cowl and a high nose. Yeah. Clearing the, the plenum on the flat plane crank. But it makes me want to do bad things. This is a car that I, you, conceivably, you could see this car coming with a sign saying like, you know, maybe don't spend more than 30 minutes at a time in it at risk of your own sanity, right? <laughs> and driver's license. Yeah, like for the sanctity of your own driver's license, maybe limit your time in this car. For the betterment of society. This motor pulls very hard and very strong and urgently at like high RPM. There's that, that really high RPM shift between the shift. There's that backfire and crackle. Yeah. That sounds so racy and so exotic. And you drop right into a fat part of the torque curve. Yes. And just transfers the weight back, kicks the nose up. That's why I thought the hood might have come open. <laughs> But again, every conversation that we have comes back to that engine, right? It just dominates yeah. the entire part of the car. Yeah. And a real live manual transmission. Yes, which is a, a good transmission, Actually, too. Pretty good, it's really it? nice. Uh, really nice buckets. With a lot of lateral support. Which is great. Yes. Good visibility. Out of the front, at least. If you're tall. If you're tall. <laughs> and I am. And a really nicely balanced, minimal understeer yes. kind of chassis, which is yes. really good, which is really good. You want to go to King City or you want to go back home? Let's flip around. Okay. I mean, well, only because we have stuff to do. I mean, you're tempting me to if, hooligan again, but because of these farms, I don't want to set a bad example. Like if we didn't have watching us. stuff to do, 
I'd say, yeah, let's just keep driving to Mexico. Places to go, cars to try. Right? Well, you know, I could stay in this for a long time. Me too. As, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. As soon as I got the keys to this car, I kind of, like, didn't want to let them go. You know, we normally, like, when we're swapping between cars, we leave the keys in the cup holder so that people can hop oh. in and drive, right? <laughs> this is car, this is the keys I wanted to keep in my pocket. It has a very satisfying sound, too, doesn't it? It just really sounds like something hot. You know, some cars are just loud. This is loud and, like, makes you smile because it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not a pretty sound. But it no, is an aggressive it's one, right? Aggressive. It's, it's race car. It's kind of like Dillinger Escape Plan. I know you don't listen to death metal, but <laughs> not much. But, but an extremely dissonant, extremely powerful sounding vehicle. Oh, really? The hooligan meter's it, off the charts right now. I find it very satisfying. <laughs> very satisfying sound and yes. feel. I'm just really pleased at what Ford has done with this Shelby version of the Mustang. What are your thoughts on the steering and chassis? The steering is direct and accurate. It is not like it has great feel, okay. but yeah, it's yeah. good enough. Yeah. It's good enough. And the chassis is so far above and beyond every other Mustang before it. Yes. Even including the bosses and the Oh Mustang yeah, and oh yeah. The they are they feel like antiques. Um, I drove one just very recently. Yeah. A very good boss. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Laguna Seca version when you were a kid, not the one from when I was a kid. And it it's an antique yeah. compared to this car. This is this chassis is so sophisticated that it actually compares well to BMW, I feel. This car is in a different league. From the other Mustang? From, from the muscle car. Oh. This is not a muscle car anymore. No. Or, or the muscle car yeah. definition needs to change. Yeah. Because this is genuine sports car stuff. This is exotic sounding, great handling, makes you drive like a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff bundled up into one. Makes you a better driver. You don't have to be a great driver to go fast in this car. And we have, we have stability off, yeah? I think we do. Yeah, it looks it's, like we do. I see the sign right the there. The tires are so sticky. These these Michelin Sport Cup 2s are a special compound yeah. on the Shelby. I don't know how they talk Michelin into that. <laughs> well, they all do, right? I told my friends at Michelin they need to make them all like this. It's that good. It works really well on this chassis, really well on this oh, car. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the shock damping is just right. The, the car just has the slightest amount of oversteer. But it's... It's not even a slide. Yeah. It, just it's like a just very like a couple balance. degrees. Yeah. Yeah, a couple yeah. of degrees. It's balance. It's it's me being able to feel the front and the rear the front and rear working together. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a harmony front to back. Oh yeah. Right? For sure. <laughs> feel that tail move a little bit there? I love how the rear just scoots around the corner. Like it just pushes the front end along. It has a really it's nice sense. Yeah, it right. That feels really good. Following even from my it around seat. in control. Yeah, yeah. And then the power adds to the rear grip. Yes. It doesn't detract from it. Yes. And some cars we complained about that didn't put power down well, or other cars that that were twitchy under yeah. power. Yeah. The the GT three fifty R is not, and it's actually significantly better than the GT three fifty. Really? The GT350 is a little more loose. Okay. I would adjust the GT350. If I owned one, first thing I'd do would be put a front, bigger front end sway bar. On. Yeah, yeah. This car is extremely successful track <laughs> car. And it's kind of amazing. It's what, 55 grand, 60 grand? It's a good value. It's, you could buy one for that. It's an amazing car at that price point for... You know, okay, must, being a Mustang aside, the performance and just this motor, this engine, it's unlike anything else in this segment, and above or below, right? Yeah. It's absolutely got good top end, it just doesn't let go. It is, it does seem to be pulling harder and harder as the revs climb. Yeah. Where's the power peak? Do you remember what our power peak is going to be right off Redline, if I recall correctly? 
I'm not, I can it's, tell you it's way up there. It's all up there. And yeah. that's really cool. I, but it's still strong at four to 5,000. It's so enough. strong, you, you think that you're almost done with the revs. As you were mentioning earlier, and you're not. It just keeps going and keeps getting going better. Going and going. And it's like, it's, it's absolutely that? bizarre, uh, but yeah. really, really yeah. fun. Feel the way it accepts the power. Yeah. Roll into that power, and the car accelerates, cornering in a balanced fashion. The, the power doesn't upset the car's balance. It kind of maintains the same balance and exits the corner in a big fat hurry. <laughs> Even low RPM, effectively, you know, or, yes. uh, in this car. You know, it, it's cool. I, like, we all love high revving, naturally aspirated motors, right? Yes. Like, that makes uh, the, direct the car response. special. The direct yeah. response, reaching for that power peak feels special. Yeah. You know, because you feel it, like, drip in more and more. Yeah, and more, it's and the satisfying. Sound is there and, Right, I can't stand an engine that falls off. Yes. Or even that doesn't gain. It's like, I want more. I want a reward yeah. for the revs. And that's going to be the real, you know, as we have this turbocharged performance engine future yeah. ahead of us, this is going to be a rarefied thing to have. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a very uncommon thing to have this kind of special engine with this kind of characteristic. So if you don't have yours, get it because this is really special really special. We were talking earlier about the Alpha 4C. Yeah. It has a little turbocharged engine with good yes. power, yeah. but it doesn't pull strongly as the revs build. Nope. It needs an engine with a power band like this yes. that builds with revs and has that sporty feel. That's yeah. Just for the feel of it. Yeah. Not for the actual speed, just for the excitement factor. Yeah. Because, you know, that's, that's the stuff that numbers can't measure. You can put a number on acceleration, but you can't yeah. put a number on the excitement. That's and right. And a car that just feels thrilling is more fun anyway than a car that's faster. That's part of the definition of sports car. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, you can't put a number on this motor. I mean, you could put an RPM on it and stuff, but the excitement that you get off this thing, it's hard to quantify outside of just saying, no, it rocks, it's special, you know, because of these reasons. So that's why, I mean, it's, you know. It's like a, a band that you're reading about. You can't yeah. get the sound from a story in a magazine. <laughs> you got to try it. You gotta drive one. I was like, you know, these aren't easy to find. Yeah. There's not many of them around. It handles way, way, way better than a stock Mustang. Absolutely. Does. It's it's the best driving Mustang ever. You're totally right. Without a doubt. Well, as we enter back into the best driver's car queue, thank you very much, Randy. And as I stopped for this stop sign, I remember to mention that the brakes are very strong. <laughs> we haven't spent much time with them, have we? We haven't, and they're successful. Really good braking system. Maybe even too good for some people's taste. Yeah. It's a big toe. Yeah. All you want on that brake pedal is very a big gentle. toe. Because they have a lot of bite. Yeah. You, you get a lot of stopping right. power from just a little bit of a pressure on the pedal. Yeah. It's a very firm pedal, very little travel in the pedal but I actually am a big fan of that. I think I'm gonna put it right here between, behind Yeah, you can friends. put it behind the, uh, put in that gap where the... the down oh, there? Down there, yeah, yeah, by Too the Jaguar. Dirty. Oh, it's fine, that's where it was. Oh, that's you don't wanna walk it. all that way. Yeah, I don't know, I'm lazy. <laughs> come on, come on. You can, you can just make this figure through exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, thanks for letting me Happy take to, you around Randy. in the Mustang. Love Shelby. Do a bunch more, and you can okay. find more episodes on the same place you're watching this episode. So, see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>